Hi, I'm Mick with American Air Cannons, and today we're going to be building the MPC Potato Launcher Cannon. And I just want to give you an overview of the tools we'll be using, and you need to have these to be able to follow along with this video. Alright, to start with, we're going to need some PVC glue, some PVC primer, I use a little Phillips ratchet drive screwdriver, a 5 16 nut driver, a 7 16 open end box wrench, a 9 16 open end box wrench, we've got a quarter inch drill, a 7 16 inch drill, and we have a quarter inch NPT pipe threader here. And that's pretty much all you need to put this cannon together, and it goes together in about 20 minutes. So when you get your box, it'll just come like this with your kit in it. Just pull the parts out, the barrel, go ahead and toss the box. You should have a box full of parts right here, so we'll pull these out. Make sure everything's in there. Go ahead and toss that box. First thing I like to do is I'll pull out the uh, sprinkler valve, go ahead and toss that box, and we've got a little black thing here that engages the valve, we don't need this, we're going to toss that out too. First thing I do is I need to drill out the lid right here. i got to do this, and this will allow us to put our trigger assembly in. So first thing I'm going to do is undo the parts. Just simply take these screws out, there's eight of them, get them all loose and you can just pull them out by hand. Make sure you hold on to these because we're going to use them later when we put it back together. What I do is I hold it with the, the hole here at the top and you just pry it apart with your hand, it'll pop right out. And you'll notice that there's a spring inside. So you have three pieces now, the lid, the spring, and the housing here. So don't lose your spring. Now the next thing we'll do is we're going to drill out this lid right here and we just use a regular drill press. What I do is I have a little vise here, I put it in bottom up so this little part is facing up, that way it sits flat, just stick it in there, start your press and just take your time and go slowly with it so you get a nice clean drill. Let me just drill it out. When you're done, got a nice clean hole in here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to thread the hole for the trigger assembly. And what I've got here is a quarter inch NPT threader I just got at Home Depot. And we'll just stick it in there. Stick it in with your hand. And with your 7 16 wrench, we just thread it on there. Just take our time and just turn the lid and start threading it. I want to work it back and forth a little bit, get nice clean threads in there. And I usually go about three quarters of the way up until it gets really tight. And there you have it. The lid is all threaded for our trigger assembly. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to fill this hole and you're going to fill this hole with either JB Weld or you can throw some uh, silicone in there, whatever you want to do, and let it sit overnight. So let's pretend that we went ahead and we filled both these holes, it sat overnight, it's all filled up in there, it's glued, it's good to go. The next thing we want to do empty out our parts bag here and you should have a nipple in there, a box with a, a gauge, two of your nipples for the cannon, a Schrader valve for filling the air, and your trigger assembly. So now this thing is sat overnight, we have both holes filled, we're just going to screw in our, our nipple here. Now we use the 9 16 box wrench and tighten it up nice and snug, don't overdo it. Put the spring back in, it fits right over 
this little piece in here, this little guide, and it goes on here. Make sure there's nothing in there. Sandwich it down on there. Put your screws back in. And what I do is I start at one end and tighten it down kind of like a gasket on your car. I go to the opposite end and tighten that one down next so we've got a nice flat even tightening. Skip over go back to this end over here. Get that one. Go to the opposite side. Get this one down here. And just kind of skip around. The reason I do that is I want it to, the seat evenly so we don't pinch the gasket or get any uh, gaps in there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the, the body assembly, the chamber together. So that's real easy to do. What I do is I start with the big sleeve here, put a little primer in there, make sure you get a good one. Do both ends while you have it. Saves a little bit of time. Now this piece, we're going to prime that one as well. This is going to go in there. Got that done. You can go ahead and do the inside of it for this small piece here. I'm going to prime that guy too. I kind of prime all these guys, get them ready to go, and then you can just slap it together. Go ahead and do the end cap. Let that sit. And the last one is just this little piece of PVC pipe that I cut. It comes with your kit pre-cut. And we do both sides of this on the outside. Make sure you get a good coating on there. So that's ready to go. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to drill out these things once we put it together. So we let this stuff dry, get our glue ready to go here, and we're going to start putting the chamber together. So you're going to want to put on a pretty liberal amount of glue because we don't want this thing to leak. So I goop it on there pretty good all the way around. And my trick is I do both pieces. That way just if there's any missed part in there, the little extra glue will get it. So with both these ends with glues on it, what I do is I put it in and I twist as I put it together. Make sure I get a nice seal in there. Same little thing with this little piece here. A nice liberal mount on there and we're going to stick this in here and we're going to twist and seat it all the way down that's good enough with our piece of uh, PVC pipe same thing nice liberal coating on there a little bit on on the inside here as well in case we have any little gaps we don't want to have this thing leak at all do a nice little twist on this one all the way down last I'm going to put the cap on put a nice coating in there Throw a little bit around the outside here, make sure we don't have any leaks. This is really important because this is the chamber that holds the air until you fire it, so you do not want this part to leak. So this one we're going to twist on all the way down. You'll see when you pinch it, you get a, a nice goo ring around here. 
This is good, you want that. It looks a little sloppy, but you know it's not going to leak and you can always trim this off with a razor blade later. So there you have it, our finished air chamber. So now what we need to do is we need to drill two holes, one for the pressure valve and one for the, the air filler valve. So we'll go back over to our drill press here and clamp this thing down. I like to use a pipe clamp so it doesn't jump around and get a nice smooth drill. It's really important that this thing is drilled smoothly so it doesn't leak. Get it locked into where you want to drill it. And just take your time and drill a nice, slow, smooth hole. Well, there's our first hole. I'm going to flip it around, try and line it up as best I can. Lock it down, drill my second hole. Alright, there you have it. We got our two holes drilled, one for our pressure valve and the other one for our Schrader valve. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our valves together should have a little white box with a pressure gauge in it. This one you can screw in by hand. Get it started. It should go right in there. It'll thread in by itself. When it gets too tight, grab your 9 16 open end wrench here. So it's straight. Next we're going to take our Schrader valve. We're going to put that in. We start that one by hand. Grab our 7 sixteenths. And we'll go ahead and tighten this one. And it'll thread itself in as well. And once we have that one down, don't over tighten it, we don't want the strip. There's our finished air chamber. We're all set to go. I like to let this dry, sit overnight before I shoot it. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the air valve on. So what I do is I take my first closed nipple and I'll screw it in here. Now these parts I don't glue. That way you can replace your valve if it ever blows out. And you'll notice on the valve that it's got a 45 degree angle on the housing. This 45 faces forward. This is the airflow. And if you ever forget, it's real easy because at the bottom, you've got a set of arrows that show you the direction of the flow. So, since the air's in here, we want the air to come out and flow out the barrel. We're going to put this together facing forward. We just screw this on until it gets nice and snug. Put another one in the front for our barrel. Now that's ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is put our barrel together. Same thing with the barrel. We're going to glue this part. Put a little bit of this in there. bit on this piece that goes into it. Let those set up for a second. Go ahead and add our glue. You don't have to be real liberal with this glue, just a little bit to hold it together because once the air passes through this, it's all it already on its way out. This really doesn't have to hold any air. So I just twist it in there nice and neat. Gives us a nice seal. You can add different barrels with this. Once you have this basic bazooka style cannon, you can add other barrels to it. You could add the golf ball barrel, um, the potato cannon barrel. They're interchangeable, which is pretty nice. That's why I don't glue this to this piece. So let's screw that on. 
Now the final thing we need to do is add this to the barrel. So again, I'm going to put a little primer on here, put it on the inside, let that dry, add it to the outside of the barrel, just on one end. We're going to let that dry. Add a little bit of glue. And again, on this part, it doesn't take a whole lot. You just want this enough to stick it together because this part doesn't really hold any air. So we're going to twist this one in here. And there you have it. So this part just screws into the receiver. And last but not least, we'll put our trigger assembly on here. Make sure it faces forward. I'm going to twist this around so we can see what's going on with it. I usually have mine like on a 45 degree angle so I can see what's going on. And there's your finished potato can. Now the very last thing you can do with this that I like to do, it makes it really easy for the, doing the potato stuff because you're just going to take a potato stick it over the edge of the barrel and stick it down in there and it makes a perfect wad. You just stuff it down there with a broomstick. What you could do to make it easy is you could take it over if you have a grinder and you can grind the edge which will give it a 45 degree angle almost like a knife edge or you could just use a regular file and you can file the edge so you have a nice sharp edge and that helps you cut perfect potato wedges. So this is Mick from American Air Cannon saying thanks for watching and happy shooting.